This week on RSBNB Update, we preview the effigy incubator and float some ideas on how many effigies can be expected. This will be one of the first updates to bring new lore content without a full quest, and we discuss what it means for the future. This is RSBNB Update, episode 794, recorded Thursday, September 10th, 2020. Incubating the Incubator. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of RSBNB Update. Tannis and myself are here this week. A little bit of a, a bit of a quiet week after our wonderful archaeology lore episode last week with Diana and Sirion covering. Everlight. I enjoyed that one. I think that was my favorite one yet. It was really cool and it kind of um, kind of inspired me to maybe go back to Everlight. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I think I should go back there now. Right now? <laughs> like right now? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> okay. no. <laughs> all right. All right. And I mean, if you were going to do that, then other people who are doing uh, listening to the podcast could do the same thing and go back to Everlight and dive into you know some of those beautiful underwater things and uncover what light and dark really means for the ice scene and so much more but of course that was last week and this week is a patch week here and we're gonna dive right in and cover those plus the live stream talking about a new D D coming out on monday but if you're joining us for the first time i am shane 12088 and he is tennis 79 and uh, you can find full show notes at update dot rsbnb.com and hopefully as we move through this we'll uh, provide some insight on you know some of these patches and of course also uh the new dnd that's on the way so it's just starting off with the patches kind of a laid-back patch week this week um starting with a old old mini game and i don't know when the last time i played this was but it was always a it was always a endeavor to get people together to play Barbarian Assault because you have to figure out what roles people want to play and um, ensure people are able to go for the full 10 rounds. And we're opening up Patch Week this week with two changes to the Barbarian Assault minigame that where they improve the flow of interactions within Barbarian Assault by removing delays and resolved a number of minor bugs that existed in Barbarian Assault. And, you know, we, we talk about... We talk about all these old pieces of content so many times, and I think Barbarian Assault is one that goes way back and is one of the core bedrock principles of minigame in RS, and it's just good to see it get some TLC this week. Yeah, you know, the last time I can remember talking about Barbarian Assault was when they gave it like a facelift, and that's probably been a few years ago at this yeah. point. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was... It's quite a while, but for um, I think I think it's probably pretty common for like uh, I almost said five fours, five sixes now um, get a lot of their uh, bonus agility. I think from Barbarian Assault. Oh, so, really? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of one of those niche <laughs> niche things, but yeah, um, it's really good uh, bonus XP from there. Interesting, and you know. Uh, that speaks to a whole other issue of uh, agility, but we'll save that for another show. Uh, well, uh, you know, it's kind of like how high you know how heist is really good for like hunter. Yeah, um, I think it's same same thing. All right, fair enough. Messaging has also been added when a player attempts to use ultra growth potions on a wider variety of of invalid farming patches. The mini games tab will now appear when teleporting directly to the player on ports via the captain's log in the surf in the circus. Interesting. Hmm. So if you teleport into ports at just that one spot, it wouldn't display the mini game window that you need previously. <laughs> That's weird. That is that is a pretty weird one. The banker in the Max Guild will now ask how many items you'd like to deposit when using an item on them. And this is, you know, one interaction that many people forget you can do. And this goes way back yeah, is that you can use an item on a banker to bank like, that one item. I didn't remember that either. Huh. 
Yeah. I don't think I ever tried it. Right. And, you know, you know, when you're thinking about it, that's effectively a two-click maneuver if you're always aiming to bank the various items, say, in the top left of your inventory. Whereas if you were just aiming to bank that one item, you would click the banker. So that's click number one. Click the item. Click number two. And then press escape or click the X in the bank. And that's an extra click if you just have to bank one item. Um and even if you, you know, were just doing, um, if you were doing something skilling related that had only one inventory item in it and you, for some reason, went into your bank and clicked the deposit all button, this would be a faster interaction than that even. Um, so, so it just goes to show that, yes, this is, this is indeed still a thing and it has its place when you're training. Hmm. So. Yeah. Fishing spots in the Enchanted Valley can now be alert without having to have a fly fishing rod in your inventory. Do you remember the Enchanted Valley? No, I don't, but is this not having a, a fishing pole? I thought that was one of the perks from the aquarium. Uh, the, yeah, the bait. The bait, uh, having no bait, is indeed a perk from the aquarium. Um, this was the Enchanted Did Valley... Come? from uh one of the lunar quests okay lunar i thought you were gonna say or sorry uh uh, not lunar uh fairy quests okay that's okay i thought you were gonna say tarnadad no it's like no i will not no not go back there yeah and there's also, of course, the fairy ring that allows you to get in. And you know, this is actually whenever whenever hiding seek happens, it was one of the and fairy rings are allowed. It's actually one of my favorite spots to hide because you know it's kind of just out of the way. And you know, you don't normally think of these other little realms like that where you can hide. So uh, I, I I don't know why you'd go there after the quest, but there's an op- opportunity to j- do just that. Yeah, there's a few of those little things on the fairy ring. And yeah, there, like yeah, yeah kind of yeah, special, weird like that. Yeah. That you know, we, you don't really see that anymore. Uh, the dying roses in the perils of Ice Mountain uh, can now be watered using cans on your tool belt. Watering cans, of course, on your tool belt. Um, going back in those quests, you can now claim the prof- profound title from Lanthus when wearing the full profound decorative armor set. The sharks are good for the elf achievement can be completed now by depositing raw great white sharks. I've never heard of this achievement. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is. Apparently. But it has to do with elves and fishing, so I know you won't like it. <laughs> Why wouldn't I like it? It said something about elves, right? And shark. Oh. I mean, elves I mean, and fishing. I mean, it's fine. Uh, this oh. is the achievement that requires the player to bank a raw shark in one of the elf camp uh, deposit boxes in the Tyrannon Forest. Okay. Well, that's acceptable, right? Yeah. So, that's in the forest. I didn't know there's sh- there shark fishing. Oh, yeah, there. yeah, that's yeah. Big. Right on the far uh, west there. Believe it or oh, not. Yeah, I, re- I remember that. I used to do Slayer there. Yeah, no, yeah, okay. that's exactly it. And one of the one of the interesting things about that, um, if you are doing elves for Slayer, what you would do is you would bring a bunyip because if you had the bunyip familiar, it would of course heal you over time. Then you'd bring a few food, you know, just if you got extra low. But you'd use that familiar, and then you'd go fish those shark there and use it to eat the raw shark. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's uh, we're telling all the old tricks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if people have an elf slayer task nowadays, they're going to do it in Prif, right? But well, this yeah. is where you used to do those. Yeah, before we had a Prif. Back in my day, before there was elf shitty, when the elves were just homeless and they hung out in a camp. <laughs> Uh, players will no longer be able to put a dash or underscore at the front of their name when changing it. And you know, this might have been a way for me to get Shane thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> because I, I don't know that they would force people to change their names who'd already done this. So. Yeah, I wouldn't th- you wouldn't think so. 
uh, fixed an issue where players' names on the examine interface would change to inspect player when switching to legacy uh, mode. Compressed anima will no longer artificially inflate the total anima listed in quick chat. The tree gnome stronghold fruit tree patch will no longer progress to the wrong state when using ultra growth growth potion on it. Well, that's a good one. Yeah, I don't, I don't exactly know uh, what wrong state that would be, but that's not definitely not the expected action there. A destroy all option now appears when destroying the woodcutting outfit. Um, and for anybody who didn't know, whenever you have one of these skilling outfits and you destroy one piece, if you have the rest in your inventory, it will ask you if you want to uh, destroy it or destroy all the remaining pieces. Now, this next one I don't understand here. I, th- I think it might be an anagram. I'm not entirely sure. Um, Shanky Mans, or we mean Corporal Key Mans, will now visibly reclaim dismissed baby trolls. And Corporal, uh, Corporal Key Mans is in Berthorpe. And looking on Google, I don't see anything about anything named Shanky Mans for RuneScape. Oh, the the troll, the troll it has refers to him as Shanky Mans. There we are. That makes sense then. All right, fair enough. Um next uh next in the patch notes a bunch of hot fixes that uh were fixed the previous week now one of these is to do with the essence of finality where special attacks could be used with mismatch attack styles through the essence of finality and you know this was one of the things that we talked about when it came out Uh a balancing mechanic so that's good that has been fixed next and you're probably imagining how much fun the PVMers were having with this one (laughs) Adrenaline will no longer be incorrectly refunded when swapping Essence of Finality amulets, and I'm assuming it would have oh, been a good, a good uh, swap on that front. Uh huh. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. And one final note in the patch notes here, and this is one that anybody who either loves or hates Livid Farm would absolutely love to hear. An issue has been fixed that caused Pauline Polaris to become invisible for players progressing through the Lunar Diplomacy quest. Because after all of that livid farm stuff, you kind of just wanted to disappear, but definitely bad for quest goers. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So there's our patch notes for the week, everyone. Uh, kind Kind of light, but hey, you can't have everything each and every week. Yeah, I mean, there's some there's some decent stuff in it. Next up, live stream time this week. Um, of course, next week we're getting um, effectively a mini remaster to the uh, Penguins, which uh, was talked about in last week's live stream. But this week they talked about some new content called the Effigy Incubator. And this is going to be a new monthly D&D in Carapax secret lab which you know we, we knew that they were going to have to have a have a use for this after the quest and here it is yeah um this week we had mods osborne and shrew on the live stream with mod porky hosting and you know i i think this one is something that people are going to come to enjoy because when you look at what it's going to bring forward uh, for people, it's going to be just you know another way to further kick it up a notch in the skills that uh, these effigies are involved in. And what they came up with the idea on this and what its genesis was, was what would happen if a monthly distraction and diversion benefited you across the entire month instead of the you know 10 minutes it takes you to knock it out at the first of the month, right? And they also wanted to make some connections with the lore of Desperate Measures. So, this is going yeah, to be there's... arriving on Monday. 
I think that's one of the most impressive things with this is we're going to start seeing story um, being integrated more and more with um, the various like styles of updates. I think that's cool. Um, yeah, and the and monthly D and Ds are the ones like I'm most likely to do. Right, because there's fewer uh, of them. And yeah, and you just it's easy to remember them. Yeah, and you can run through and you know you're done in you know, ten fifteen minutes, what have you. Yeah, and you, you know I I think we also are going to have an unseen benefit from this that people aren't talking about is that by continuing the story and tying the story into each piece of content that comes out month to month. We start with desperate measures, but after that, there's always going to be a question of when is the next quest coming out and when is the story going to progress? And in in many other games out there, they put out an episode campaign for their new section of story and they start with a couple episodes and then, you know, every month or so they trickle out a little bit more content. Whereas RuneScape really hasn't done that in the past, except for when we were doing those world events. Yeah. And even then it wasn't necessarily going to be monthly. Yeah, one the same. And that's one thing that I think people are uh, severely underestimating with this style of content release. And well, the, they don't know because it's never been encountered, right? Exactly. Um, I, like not here anyway. Um, I think this is great. I mean, look, you don't always want to wait for a quest, and like someone like me, like I like quests, but it's not like it's my favorite thing to do because there are puzzles, and that's usually a bummer. Um, but I do like the story. Like I like the lore, and this gives you another chance to kind of like get some story without having to do all the puzzles and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And what they're specifically going to be focusing on here is figuring out what the ancient effigies were. Because recall that um, when you do your ancient effigy, you got a dragonkin lab. And they want to look at how that may cross over with urns and in particular maybe the brooch of the gods too um, because the brooch of the gods is going to be able to use these effigies. But more on that in just a tiny bit. And this is actually going to be a fairly high level uh, distraction and diversion as well because it requires level 85 in smithing, rune crafting, crafting, or invention. Plus you also have had to have completed desperate measures. Yeah, finally a decent quest reward yeah and you you know you could say why didn't they put this out beforehand but it kind of in my view would have been lumping things more into an expansion kind of model whereas with this you can aim to have various pieces of content come out and they can stand alone which is something i think that we've seen that runescape is more tailored to rather than the expansion model yeah, I mean, well, give people <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> our players. You have to pace because we seem to be uh, incapable of doing that ourselves. <laughs> give us a piece of content, yeah. we will play it until yeah. it is dead. <laughs> so, you know, do you want to have it all done in a you know two weeks or no? At least, you know, have it stretch out no. you know, over time. Yeah, and. Also with this, I I want to underscore what I said in the uh, discussion on the requirements for it. It's not an and for the requirements. It's an or. So you only need level 85 in one of those skills plus desperate measures. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's not so bad. Yeah, and and I mean 85 invention with the way the curve works. That's not too bad. Um, Many people, of course, have 85 smithing after what we had with the mining and smithing rework and – Rune crafting and crafting, thats I'll leave that up to players to decide on how they feel about that. Um, but the whole idea behind this is you have an effigy incubator. And what they're saying in the very early idea behind this is that Carapac expected this incubator to revolutionize memory storage for the Dragonkin. We don't know why, and that might be alluded to in some of the uh, content that's talked about. Uh, when this D&D drops and you're effectively going to be creating effigies with uh, this D&D which, you know, when you think about it, those effigies are stupid rare in the real world when you're skilling and these ones are going to be just a tiny bit different but they're also going to uh, operate in a different mechanics that we'll get to in just a moment. 
There's volatile, erratic, stable, and explosive effigies. They work similar to urns in some respects, they say, in that they are going to be uh, in search of knowledge. And what this means is that as you train one of these skills, um, a number of skills actually, uh, the choices are either cooking, fishing, mining, woodcutting, divination, farming, hunter, or runecrafting. As you train one of those skills, the effigy will fill up, and then when it's done, you'll get either a lamp or a uh, bonus XP star based on what kind of effigy is. And it's going to be a lot of player exploration. The lore will be told through the event. There's an NPC in there that does the onboarding and provides a tutorial uh, for you. And they're, they're trying some different things about this as well. And the first one is that it's actually going to take several months for the players to progress through the actual story behind it. Which, and granted, you know, we're, we'll have a full discussion on this next week once we get our hands on it. But what this is effectively doing is it's saying, you know, you go forth and you do this content, you're going to be greeted with a new bit of lore each month for a few months down the road. And I don't know, how do you feel about that on the surface? Um, I mean, I think, I think, well, like I said, I, I, I like that. Um, especially because you know that that's going to be coming. So you have something to look forward to. Right. Um, which definitely you know, helps. And I see, I thought too, that there was supposed to be a mini quest to introduce this. Yes. And, and that's something that is, that I didn't mention here is that there's going to be a mini quest and they're calling it a bottle mini quest. For this, so I could actually see that like having installments of that, like that coming back around next month, you know, while it's telling the story. So it might take two or three months to tell a story through maybe a few different hmm. little mini quests. I, That's just speculation. Yeah, I don't know. And, and I know we'd like to have something like that, but I, I think there's only going to be one. Okay. If I if well, I put my finger on it. So either way, I mean, I think it's. You know, I think it's good to see stuff that we haven't seen before. Um, so why not? You know, why not try it? It, it kind of it's kind of building bridges too between different what we would consider different kind of like sub communities, right? We always think it's like skillers, and PVM, and, but a lot of us do a little bit of everything, and we like we like story too. So to know that that's going to be coming around when you're doing a monthly D and D, which um, I'm guessing this is probably going to be popular. I mean, yeah. just because, like, why wouldn't you? Especially on an efficiency yeah. front, why? Yeah, why it, you? it's basically adding an extra class of urns, and you know how much people yeah. use their urns for efficiency. Yeah, well, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I, I think that's a good thing. I mean, you know, I'm I'm all for like trying new things like that, um, especially when it sounds like it'll be successful. And another thing they're doing with this is they said, what would be the idea behind a D&D if you had a process where a player decides they only want to play one specific aspect of it? And the idea is is that you can treat it as an XP shower, as the term was used, and get a, quote, mother load of XP. Just do that one portion of it, or you can do the entire process. And make the make the effigies as well, and carry that out into the real world, and use those for your training eventually. Um, it's also worth noting that effigies can be incubated outside of this encounter, and they say that this brings a lot of uh, conscious decisions in that the players need to make when doing this D and D. Because in addition to that, unlike most other D and Ds, it's going to be a piece of content that the player can come back to even if the monthly reset is up and gather resources and continue to make this, you're not going to get as much XP, but you'll still be able to do it. Yeah. My guess is that probably it's not going to be worth it. That really yeah. wouldn't make sense. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see months. what the numbers are on it, but the yeah. off month, uh, or rather the in-between cycle of when the DND is not up, what will effectively happen is you'll gather your materials and then whenever you gather those materials, you'll be able to convert that to a currency and just buy the effigies outright. 
Oh, okay. I want. Can you? I wonder if you can just save the material so and so you don't yeah. have to spend that time. You, you probably okay. could. You probably could. Well, see, this is going to take a month or two to figure right. out the best, best practices. Well, um, mini game monthly mini reset tokens work for this. Oh, that's cool too. Yeah. Nice. Now see, the, that's the that's the attention to detail that we didn't yeah. always always used to get. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the core game loop will be that you gather your materials, you then create an uncharged effigy at the workbenches, then you incubate them, which can still be done once the D&D ends, but you'll get a reduced amount. So the idea is, is that you'll get more XP from creating an uncharged effigy, so you'll need to exactly figure out how many you can make in your allotted time um, in there on the first of the month. So it's going so then, to be yeah, a, it's going it, to be a case of maximizing, of right? And getting the material ahead of time would be a crucial part of that. Yeah, and, and that's one thing I'm not clear on is if the material gathered off cycle can be used uh, at the monthly reset. Yeah, well, I guess we'll find out Monday, huh? Yeah, uh, you get more XP from. Uh, I already mentioned that uh, effigies will work like urns, and each one has four skills that it wants knowledge in, and you'll be able to use it on any of these skills. So there's ex- explosive and unstable effigies that will grant bonus XP, and um, there's also erratic and volatile, which grant direct XP, and the skills on the whole are divination, farming, hunter, and runecrafting for the erratic and unstable effigies, and for the volatile effigies, you have cooking, fishing, mining, and woodcutting. I think I'll be signing up to use some of the woodcutting ones. Yeah. Um, I, I really don't see myself using, uh, I mean, the hunter ones are probably going to be on that list because they give both XP and, and bonus XP. And we know how you felt after last year's hunter nerf. Yes, we do. So there's and always going to be a chance I mean, to build up. Yeah. And I, always, I mean, I've always used, always used urns, fishing, and cooking. So, oh. why don't you buy a brooch of the gods? <sighs> because I don't know what the interest rate is at the bank of Shane, but <laughs> I feel like it might be might be higher right now. <laughs> it probably is for something like that. It probably is, and they're calling these effigies super urns. That's the way they're looking at it. Um, okay. There's also one in ten chance that the uh, effigy will transform and it'll give you a dragon can lamp or star, which can be used on any skill. So that's one oh, in ten. Nice. Hmm. And may- maybe that's the hidden gem that we're we're not looking at is that could be. Well, we don't know how many you can make. Right. Be a lot of time. Yeah. So, you know who knows. You can make ten, and maybe you're going to be, you know, it's almost like being guaranteed one, or maybe you make twenty. I don't or know. Maybe you can only make three. You know, who knows? But the thing is, is it's probably going to be a substantial amount because each one is only good for sixty thousand bonus XP or direct XP, and you got to make it last an entire month. Oh well, yeah. And you know how quick you go through earns. Yeah. Hmm. Well, now I'm hyped. Yeah. Uh, I want to see what's up. Yeah. And, and see, initially I was thinking, oh, maybe maybe you'll be able to have, you know, four, maybe three effigies created at, at, at one go. And then I was thinking, no, that's, that's only 240k XP. And they want this to be something that lasts for the entire month. And you could potentially fill that up in a day. So oh. I, I'm, I'm thinking maybe a lot more along the lines of a dozen, I guess. Like you, yeah, dozen eight, and if you spread that over, out over the months, that that's between that's between two or three per week that you'd end up using, which really isn't a lot, but still, it's not an uh, immense amount of XP. Yeah, and it's got to be. Let's see what troll invasion 
is about 180k. Yeah. All together. So it's got to be better than. Eh, that's a good guess then. Yeah, and, and and see, that's what initially put me to the three to four mark is what something like Troll Invasion gives. Mm-hmm. So, and and it's a question of. Is it going to be worth doing if you get this, you know, if, if that XP number was 180K and you get it except it's spread out across the entire month? The question is going to be how many effigies can you create and what is the number that you need to be able to create to make this worthwhile to extend across the entire month? So... And, you know, I, I think that's where the math is going to be done after yeah. the optimization of figuring out how exactly to make them most efficiently will. Uh, monthly reset tokens can be used, but they won't help progress in the lore. Another tidbit that came out is that there's going to be um, some things that they didn't mention in the live stream that are going to be able to be interacted with inside the incubator if your world is more busy. So the idea is, is that they want to create content where people are playing together because we all, we all know how special that was with archeology. span Yeah. So I, hopefully it'll um, be lucrative en- enough, I guess, to be able to do that for the entirety of the month and, you know, keep it, keep it fairly active. Yeah. Now, on the lore oh, front, so. uh, this was written by Maud Raven, uh, who is also, of course, involved with Desperate Measures, and we know uh, the caliber of lore that he writes and all the little uh, fun jabs and wits that are in there, so that will be pretty fun to see. I um, wonder if this will be uh, – I wonder if – you know, it's not actually Carapax Lab anymore. It's just Charles Lab now. He's the one down there. Hmm. It's not Doc, right? No, I mean, we know that. No, no. And and see, the interesting part is, I wonder where it'll be in terms of location because I th- I was under the assumption that when the Elder God exploded the volcano, it destroyed the entire thing. Hmm. So, lots of questions on that front. Lots of questions. Mm-hmm. Iron Men will be able uh, participate fully in this. They'll be able to. Uh, interact with the content and get the effigies as well. I know there's going to be people in the Iron Man community who are going to question this. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm sitting there going, is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. Ask an Iron Man. We need a segment to ask an Iron Man. <laughs> and, and, you know, they say it can be interacted with, but Iron Man characters, can they get bonus XP from like Heist and whatnot like we were talking about? Yeah, that's a good question. I I don't know. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll look that up. Lore requirements will be part of the Master Quest Cape. Okay, good. And, you know, I think there's always the question about this because people are always saying, hey, we need we need more stuff to be on the Master Quest Cape. But at the same time, people are like, no, it, it is what it is. Leave it. But do you remember that discussion we had when we were looking at the complicated Compre work and how that got distilled down to effectively just be a Compre work. And they said that completing every piece of new content that falls under episodic content would have a complicated requirement, or I guess in this case, a master quest requirement. I think this is pretty firmly in the realm of, of the master quest cape, right? Yeah, it is because it's, it, it's lore and it's a mini it's a mini quest. So, um, yeah. If you, if you don't add this, then what would you add? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I can't find anything on the Iron Man question. All I can find is that time limited events do not award Iron Man characters with bonus XP. Anyways, uh, continuing on with this. Um, randomized elements that will be involved and they say this is going to juice it up a tiny bit which means that you're going to be able to want to play it on a world with other people and they're going to have a dedicated world for it and effigies can be added to the brooch of the gods well it has 
another use now. That's good. <laughs> Keep them coming. Yeah, we have a question about that that we'll uh, talk about in just a bit. Um, I'm still wondering if that's an amulet or sorry, a brooch that goes in your pocket slot that's worth picking up. Yeah, well, it's a lot of money. Yeah, it really so. is. And the start location for the mini quest will be at Mr. Mordeaux on Anachronia. And that was pretty much all they talked about in the live stream uh, with this uh, high level requirements. And, you know, I, I, looking back on it, I think it will be more than that 180K we were talking about. Because how much XP is it? How much XP is 180K for someone who's level 85 in a skill? That's not very much. I mean, it's only a few hours, probably. Yeah. Uh, and if you said, hey, you're only going to be able to produce four of these and or three of these a month and get an extra 180K, what will be the point of this content? And remember, we're also living under a regime at this point where we've said that every new piece of content that comes out is going to be able to uh, have to be better than anything else so it doesn't become dead content. Cool. So. Well, we haven't seen... I mean, we haven't seen a new D&D since what? Like, the last monthly like this, I remember, that stands out would be like the Oyster. Yeah. That, that one was, was like, actually pretty good. I think that was like 2016. Was a long time ago, though. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I, I think we're due for for a good one. Your monthly D&Ds are the Oyster, the God Statues, Troll Invasion, and if you count this, the Premier Club Vault. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, just uh, bucking with the trend, they have actually already uh, put out the news post on this, believe it or not. Oh. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I wouldn't call it a news post, but they put put out a uh, they put out a blog on it, and okay. there's a little bit more information in there than was talked about on the live stream from this. And uh, the section I'll point out is that the that there's certain materials that you'll uh, get in there, and what they say. As a bonus, you'll get some XP for your efforts, and each node provides the material and XP for a different skill. So, scrap metal, knickknacks, anima nuggets, or dragon flesh provides uh, XP for smithing, invention, rune crafting, and crafting, respectively. And there's 12 nodes in total, and each one will randomly cycle between one of the four materials in a blank slate, so you have to carefully pick the right one for the material that you're after. And it's not competitive, so everybody can work on the node at the same time. Now, if you want to create an explosive effigy, um, that one requires 85 smithing. The unstable requires 85 invention. The erratic requires 85 rune crafting. And the volatile requires 85 crafting. And if you flip back to the list of skills that were talked about... If you're after woodcutting like me, that would be either volatile or explosive. So to effectively buff your woodcutting XP, you would need 85 crafting or smithing, depending on whether you want it as double XP or direct XP. Which is which is interesting because I feel like I'm getting um, getting flashbacks to that five years of skilling thing where they talked about all the skills being much more intertwined together on that. So yeah, that's true. I I think all we have to do at this point is just uh, wait to wait to get our hands on it and see what happens. Yep. Yeah, we'll get we'll get a hold of the numbers and efficiencies. Yeah. Um, further research. Oh, here's the question you were asking. Um, aside from the time limited event at the start of the month, you'll be able to come back to the lab. 
um, all the incubators down. You can grab these extra materials to trade in for incubator points, which you can spend on up to 10 ready-made effigies. So you're going to be able to get 10 each month plus however many you make. So we're looking at at least 10 in total for the entire month, which is, a, you know, if you do this, this is a free 600k XP in one one skill of your choice if you decided to put it into all all into one. Which, I mean, when you put it in that frame, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, a free 600k XP or 600k bonus XP in cooking, fishing, mining, woodcutting, divination, farming, hunter, runecrafting. I think that's a that's a really interesting mechanic. And that's probably sold me more than I was already sold on that. Because the idea of just being able to go in and work on my woodcutting, while not actually woodcutting, is kind of appealing given the state that woodcutting is in. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm um, sure many people feel the same way about farming or divination. Especially divination. I was sitting here thinking, hmm, maybe we put Priff on hold for a while for Junior, and we go and do desperate measures. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not that hard to get to. There are people they who got to it in under a week if you wanted to. Right. Uh, it would just be quest because I'm I'm sure I have all the skill requirements at this point so yeah i have to look at that i have to look at that all right um that's gonna be pretty neat that is on the way for monday the 14th we are uh, gonna move on to our listener question of the week but before we do that i'll thank our patreon supporters for this episode this week i'd like to thank andrew c brock h Cameron, CGB900, Kristen S, Danny W, Diana, Duramax, Jade Gizmo, Jade W, James W, Jason S, Joe M, John P, Kyle, Mr. Ling, Nora, Rastafa, Samantha R, Stab Eve, The Naked Captain, The Lion, Tom V, and Zant. Thank you all of you for your support. It truly does mean the world to us. And... If you want to uh, check this out and see what exactly is happening with Patreon, visit patreon.com slash rsbnb. And for as little as a dollar a month, you get access to the entire back catalog of monthly bits. This month will be RuneScape's graphical identity throughout the ages. That will be arriving to you guys next Friday. We also have an inside RSBNB update on the way as well, which is a quick little um, – blog post looking at one of the aspects of producing rsbnb update that many people might not get to see we also have the round table which this month will be happening on i think we said the 26th for that didn't we yes and then uh movie night which we'll be putting up a poll for in just a bit but all of that and more can be found at patreon.com slash rsbnb we also have a um three dollar a month tier in addition to the one dollar tier that gets you practically everything uh for one dollar a month uh the three dollar tier gets you aac stereo aac versions of the show and mentioned on the podcast at the start of the month and for five dollars a month uh you'll get a shout out each and every week and exclusive access to the clips that we used to make the clip show at the end of the month so that's definitely a fun tier that uh, a lot of people opt for if any of this sounds interesting to you, just check out check it out at patreon.com slash rsbnb. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, guys. All right. Uh, question from Sir Cubs. I'd like to ask, what would be a good buff to the brooch of the gods? I was thinking of adding the effect that it automatically collects loot from Saren spirits. That's something. Yeah, I mean, given how much you're spending on it, I mean, that might be a a good thing to add. Yeah, I mean, it's... Like but on I the said, flip I mean, side... In addition, <laughs> yeah, that's one thing that, it sh- that should add, you know, in addition to others. Yeah, and, you know, the only cautionary thing I'll say against that is when Saren Spirits were initially designed is they were designed to be something that would encourage the player to move away from standing in one spot, hence why the Saren Spirit moves. So, 
you can have but you, can you don't ask. move actually when you click on it you notice that like you're right you don't even you're stop right. your action at all you're right it's just the spirit that moves so i mean given how much you're spending for this darn thing <laughs> why yeah. not right yeah um <sighs> i'm thinking what if wearing this gave you the effect of juju potions Shane's like no no don't crash my juju potions but it's really expensive you're you're you're, you're taking the words right out of my mouth <laughs> <laughs> I would be okay with it if, like, the urns, you had to charge it up. And, oh, okay. Yeah. And each Juju Potion dose that you put in gave a certain number of charges and activations. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Because that'd as be it cool. is right now, uh, you use a Juju Potion, you get the buff for five yeah. minutes. Yeah, I'd be, and I'd then, be cool. So maybe, say, each one dose of Juju gives you ten charges. Because, or maybe a little bit more than ten, because I think the the buff would be just looking at the farming one would be would be a little bit more than ten. Um, and you know, this still wouldn't get me to buy it because I go to the <laughs> wilderness on my farming runs, and in no way am I taking an item that is worth that much into the wilderness. Well, I guess you got a point there, but no, I mean I wouldn't do that. Well, either, yeah, I mean but... for regular skilling. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, maybe we haven't heard the full story on this yet. Maybe we haven't heard the full story on this Broach of the Gods. Yeah, maybe. maybe because they're already just... adding on to it here with these, um, with these effigies. Maybe it will have some kind of pairing with, I don't know, like offhand skilling. Items. Could be, or maybe something from Orthon. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Didn't we? Didn't we think that like they could come from Orthon? What? Didn't we talk about maybe having the offhand skilling items yeah. come from Orthon? Yeah, we did. Uh, never know. Yeah. Um. For me, you know. There's that huge benefit on the portable skilling stations and whatnot. Yeah. And the fact you need invention to make this item. Um, I, I forget. Isn't it like 116 invention that you need to make to make the alchemical yeah, hydrix? pretty high. 117. Yeah. 117 invention. So um, what if – and this is perhaps a wild one. What if the brooch of the gods – double the chance of your perks going off in addition to the item level 20. That would help. Because it just feels like there should be a tie-in to invention. And maybe I think uh, Sir Cub's Saren Spirit idea is interesting too. Because if you look at the Saren Spirits right now, that comes from Grace of the Elves. But that is buffed so much by um, the the Dwarven Ring, um, Luck of the Dwarves as well. Yeah. So maybe there just needs to be some kind of synergy between these pieces of jewelry. And and that's the way to, to go about it in in that regard. Because they, should, because they all have like similar components. They all have hydrix, right? They all, yeah. you know, they all, they all start with some kind of hydrix. And then after that, it's just a question of how much value you put into this. And the reason I said my idea of perks having the double chance to trigger is because, you know portable skilling stations double chance to trigger that's all fine and dandy but that's a treasure hunter thing on the, right yeah on the whole yeah so that's my idea have invention perks have double the chance to trigger 
and yours was uh, yours was good too. In addition to Sir Cups, yeah. yeah, yeah, and you'd have to do it in a way that makes it so that you're consistently adding the charge to it, and I don't know that you'd be able to uh, put in the perfect plus because I think that'd be a, perhaps a little bit too p- overpowered. And if you look at all the slots that are already available on this, they have one for each urn, so there's no reason uh, you couldn't have one for each potion. Let's see. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. What to, like, I don't presume to know what the balance is. I just come, I just come up with the big idea, Shane. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, this is almost in the same way a passage of the abyss... Or sorry, this is like a pass. Your idea is like a passage of the abyss, for, except for potions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then there was also on the similar vein to that, there was the uh, prayer flask from uh, one twenty. Or what was it called? Um, what was that? The blessed flask. The blessed flask. Yeah, that was. Well, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was part of 120 Herb Lore, and, you know, I think that thing never really caught on, honestly. I don't know a lot of PVMers that use it, but... No. Um, no. Which I, I mean, I would think that's who it's for, but... But then again, I don't know, like, that Imp Soul has shown <laughs> that prayer's not just for combat anymore, right? right? <laughs> so maybe it, it might... That actually... That's Might actually a really interesting really idea. Blessed flask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh. And, and here we are showing exactly why having synergy between these items is good and why right now, as we're just sitting here, Broach of the, broach of the Gods kind of doesn't feel like it's worth the price. No, not yet. So, I, I'm hoping that it will be someday. So there's three ideas that can yeah. iterate on that. Thank you, Sir Cubs, for that question. If you guys want to send your own questions in, email them to questions at rsbnb.com, or you can send them to us on Twitter at rsbnb. Just uh, send mention us or DM us. And uh, next week, next week we'll have a topic on the forums as well, where you can post an update at rsbnb.com slash ask. All right, tech news. Big news on the gaming front this week. You've been following this? The the new Xbox news that came I out this week? I the new Xbox news. All right. Well, you know how we always talk about how Game Pass is such a good value, right? Yeah. Still loving it. <laughs> Still the new, loving it. The new Xbox Series X console had its price and launch date announced of November 10th for 499 US 499 US. And this is a console that can play 4K video games. I was going to say I mean it's a console but it's really like uh, it, uh, it's really kind of like a gaming PC. Right? Yeah. I mean it is. It's on par with with you know. And I'm going to get to uh, what makes it so much more. But Microsoft blew everyone away this week as well by just casually announcing a new console in addition to the Series X that will be launching on November 10th. They announced the Xbox Series S, another Xbox, for the price of two ninety nine US, two ninety nine only, that is classed as a next-gen console, plays at 1440p and upscales to 4K, upscales games to 4K. For two ninety nine, it's all digital, so no discs. So, you know, if you're looking to get into the Xbox gaming ecosystem, and you don't feel that you want to uh, go the full four ninety nine, you don't need four K, but you still want a console that is going to be able to do ten eighty p, one twenty fps with this. We need to underscore that one twenty fps on this console, the Series S, for two ninety nine, including. A very good CPU. Not as powerful as the Series X, of course, but 
it still supports 120 FPS, and it's got that uh, insanely fast SSD storage that the Series X will have. 1440p 60. It really is. Because I, I mean, I don't need 4K. I've never. I mean, it just. It's, and do you buy all your I games digitally, or do you use discs? Oh, I mostly buy things digitally. I mean, then this would every, be perfect for you. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that I buy, like, as you know, a hard copy, is like what I collect, like original NES games or Sega Genesis. You know, what I mean, like everything else has always been digital, usually with Steam or Epic, something like that. You know. Now. Now, they're also announcing with this an expansion of Xbox All Access. For twenty four ninety nine a month, you will get, and keep in mind that Xbox Game Pass Ultimate already costs fourteen ninety nine a month. Fourteen ninety nine a month. That's add, so much good. Stuff add ten dollars on onto that, and you will get. You sign up for two years, you will get a brand new console at the front of it. I, I want it sold. I'm and in. that includes Game Pass Ultimate and the new console. Dude, I'm in. I'm in. And sign me up. That's for twenty four ninety nine a month. So you get the Series S with that. The Series X, I believe, is thirty four ninety nine a month. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm already paying five for my <laughs> for mine anyway, like five bucks a month right. for my Game Pass. Right. And that also gives you the Game Pass that works on the PC. It'll work on this. And there was one more thing that was announced with this this week. EA Play is be- being merged into Xbox Game Pass. So all the titles that are on EA Access and EA's digital library will be on Game Pass. So if there's EA games you want to play, like Battlefield as an example, or the NHL hockey games, you will get to play those as well. That's cool. All for this price. And it's important to underscore that Game Pass Ultimate also gets uh, EA Play. And that's a lot. Of, it's a lot of games. Just to, like, I'm pretty sure that the PC version is fairly limited compared to normal. Oh, it is. And it's still like 100 games. Like, at least. Like, it's... it's Sold. <laughs> when does this come out? You said November? November 10th. All right, I'll take it. Yeah, sign me up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if you're an Android user, there's also on mobile as well. But this is what the uh, Xbox ecosystem is going to be about, honestly. An all-in-one gaming solution, an extra $10 a month for a new piece of hardware. And your existing subscription that you're paying for. And you just get access to all these games. And hence why they're doing a digital-only console. And I think the only reason to go PS5 at this point is if you want their exclusives. Yeah, they're still kind of perks when it comes to that. Yeah. Um, but then again, I mean, they they really knocked Microsoft around in this last last console version. Yeah. Um, and Microsoft really had to come up with a response to them. Yeah. You know, but will that, will that draw people out of, out of Sony? Like I, I mean, I don't know. I used to be pretty hardcore PlayStation guy, but once I got used to the Xbox controller, I mean. Whole, holy cow, Tannis. This also includes their project X cloud, which is their cloud gaming thing as well. Oh. Yeah, jump in on this before they lose too much money. <laughs> because, I mean, yeah, I'm going to be all over this. I'm going to get my first Xbox. It, it, it just seems like such a, such a good deal on this, you know? Well, yeah, and you can, can't you? I mean, you can put all your like streaming apps and stuff. Oh, on yeah, too, right? absolutely. It's a, yeah. it's got a full app ecosystem. See, yeah, that that's, I, I'm going to get an Xbox for my office because, you know, we got like 
Roku's and in some rooms and Apple TV's another, but I don't have anything really in my office, so I'm gonna have to have an Xbox, I think. Um, it's also going to support ray tracing as well, so it's not it's not any kind of slouch. And this is the Series S. That's awesome. Yeah, and you know, I I've, mean, that's probably equivalent of what, like, uh, gosh, like a seven or eight hundred dollar budget PC. No, 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 no. You you know, you're not going to okay. do fourteen forty p one twenty fps for. With anything probably less than a eight or nine hundred dollar video card. Oh yeah, okay. I forgot the video. I mean, I thought the video cards were high when I built. When I was five years. They're higher now. No. I know. It, I always forget how much more they are. Ouch. So then it just becomes a question: if you want the four K version of the ten eight or the fourteen forty P version for twenty five or thirty five bucks a month. Yeah, like I said, I mean, I'm going to take the 25 because yeah, and 4K is lost it, 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 for it, it, me. Right, yeah. and, and see, you really only need 4K if you got you know, a 50-plus inch TV and you're sitting at a reasonable distance from it. Anybody who's gaming at their computer really doesn't need a 4K display because you're not going to see the differences between uh, 1440 and 4K at that. All right, uh, next piece of tech news, Facebook is going back to their roots. With a campus-driven, college student-only social network, and what they're I'm sure doing, that'll work. yeah, it's it's a new, it's an entirely new platform that they're launching called uh, Facebook Campus, and they say this is a place to connect with classmates, join groups, and discover upcoming campus events, and get updates from school administration and chat with other students the new uh, platform will require school email address and will live within a dedicated section of the facebook app and it will it's effectively its own section like the watch dating gaming and news sections already are and um the chief uh, product manager for this product said that Facebook wanted to create a product where it was easy for classmates to meet uh, each other and foster new relationships and also easily start conversations. And they say that uh, Facebook campus is even more relevant than ever right now with COVID-19. We see that many students aren't returning to their campuses in the fall and classes are being held online and students are trying to react to this new normal of what it's like to connect to clubs and organizations that you care about and you know, from this perspective, you can see many um, campuses roll their own solution. Some people just use Zoom. Some people use Discord in that way. And I think Facebook wants a chunk of that pie because this well, is a market. This is a market share that they lost. Honestly, you know. Well, yeah, because people were tired of. I mean, <laughs> you want to lose faith in humanity and, and your friends and family, go to Facebook, right? You're like, oh, my God, I can't believe they posted that. Oh. Um, <laughs> in 2018, a study of U.S. users aged 13 through 17, um, only 51% of them used Facebook, which was down from 71% in 2015. And it's the old, it's the old guy on the block now. Yeah, and Edison Research, which is a um, research marketing company, said that they estimated Facebook had lost about 15 million users since 2017, with the biggest drop being in the 12 to 34 age range. You know, I wonder too, though, that's also a group that is hyper aware of um, privacy online. Than the older generation, but you know they they put it into that twelve to thirty four range, and well, yeah, and the twelve to seventeens are TikTok group, right? Well, so. yeah, yeah. Never mind. That is a good point. And you know, even even people in that range, because I'm in that range, um, it's hard to find somebody who is extremely privacy conscious, I feel. 
And it's hard to do that on the internet in this day and age. It really is. It really <laughs> yeah, it is. is. It is. Um, you basically need to say that, no, you're not going to browse with third-party cookies. You need to turn off all your ad tracking. You need to run uh, something like uBlock to turn off all the other trackers that you can't ask to turn off. You need to use an email service that isn't called Gmail or Outlook uh, to contact with people. You need to, you know, not use Facebook. You need to not use Twitter. You basically need to, if you're truly privacy minded, you basically need to run on the internet like you're running pre 2007. Wow. And Which, if you do that, people will probably think you're weird. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I only know a, a couple people who actually do that. So, see, that's almost like too much effort to like. Mm, oh, it is. It is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna set. I'm gonna set off some alarm for my right. putting this much effort. In. Right, and and see, you know, even if I wanted to, you know, just move away from Gmail, I have so many emails in here that it would be. I don't. I don't even know of an email client that would be able to cope with. My entire email history, going way back. Um, you need a personal server there, Yeah, that, that, that's that's exactly it. But then you need an email client that can handle that because you know I have emails in my Gmail going back to two thousand four. Well, that's okay as long as they're not related to national security. I think you'd be okay. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> But you know, in, in in any case, it's a it's a very, very, very hard thing to do. So um but you know, back to Facebook. I don't I don't know if, if this'll work. I think Facebook is is looking for its way to stay relevant and reinvent itself. And, you know, if there wasn't somebody at the top named Mark Zuckerberg, I think they would have already done that by now. And even if it was a different CEO, I think, um, or rather if Mark Zuckerberg wasn't Mark Zuckerberg, he would have been shown the door because these kind of losses wouldn't go in any other uh, company. That wouldn't be acceptable. So, Yeah, I mean, I just think it's, it's too tainted of a brand at this point. Yeah, that's exactly but. it. That's exactly it. Our next piece of tech news uh, relates to something that we don't uh, we don't have our feet in in the in this world. But Android 11 launched this week, including Android 11 Go, which is their version of Android aimed at uh, lower end devices that are very common in the developing world and for people in general who just want a cheap smartphone. But a lot of those smartphone manufacturers provide old Android versions, and Google wants to bring everybody forward to the latest and greatest in terms of Android, you know, and, and there's a good reason to do that for security and whatnot, as well as uh, accessibility. And, you know, one thing that uh, Android 11 has one of its, as its main features is an iteration on privacy with one time permissions that effectively allow you to limit app access to certain phone uh, tools such as the microphone, camera, and location. So if you only need to use that once, you can do that. And they also have um, new ways of disseminating that information about what is requesting what and individual portions of the operating system that can be updated on its own. And, you know, one thing I thought we might we might have a look at with this is that they brought out in Android 11, and I, I don't know if you if this would be enough for you to ever move to it. But they brought out a feature called Voice Access, and it now understands what's on your screen. So the idea behind this is that this tool lets you effective let will effectively tell you what is on your screen. So what it does is that it makes it possible for any action on your screen to be accomplished by just your voice. And can we do that on iOS yet? Because you, you're, cause you're no. very... Not that I know of. Okay. I mean, now iOS has a... They have a pretty lengthy... Um, 
set of shortcuts you can make. Um, like I've never actually spent the time to plug it all in. Um, but no, no, nothing. Well, now Siri, Siri can interact with quite a lot of things, almost anything natively. She can like do. She can turn on your flashlight, and turn it off, and um, any any native music. Well, even Pandora. She can do Spotify. That's the other one she can do. So I mean, Siri can do a lot of that. But this sounds like it's I didn't put in my um, hand. pretty all encompassing. Yeah. And, you know, the interesting part about it is that it actually is able to provide context to what you're seeing on the screen as well. So it's not just, uh, it's not just, you know, saying press refresh or something like that. It's right. actually able to use it in pretty much any, any application as well. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds kind of like a voiceover with, um, voice commands kind of um it's it's probably not something like i would migrate to just because i'm pretty settled <laughs> in right the, in the and i and apple ecosystem but um but i have i have seen it as a viable choice like there are a lot more um people in the visually impaired community that are using android based devices and i think they typically rely on like I think it's called Google Talk, and I'm guessing this new this new voice, um, what you call it, with voice voice something. Um, anyway, they'll probably use this. I mean, I would use this a lot if I ever went that way. Yeah. All right. And you know, we always have an interest in accessibility here because it's something that many people don't re- really talk about all that much. But at the same time, um, we're not Android users, so we don't know how big of a deal it is. But nonetheless, I think anytime you're asking Google to take a privacy-focused stance on something, that should definitely be something that's commended because it's their advertising service that makes them the big bucks. And privacy yeah. and advertising don't always go hand in hand. <laughs> You don't say. Yeah, that's it's right. It's almost like they're contrary to each other. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, I think we can move on to our other things. And, uh, you know, we got our skill of the months going on. We got summoning going on right now. We got fishing starting in about 10 days from this point. So if anybody wants to sign up, just visit rsbnb.com slash SKOTM. And sign up for fishing. Somebody really didn't get that many signups. Let's make fishing a nice and big one for that. Um, let's put, let's talk about our achievements this week. So starting off on the ninth, we have Harlot Man with ninety nine archaeology, Zerdones with ninety nine farming, Devil Chat with ninety nine smithing on the eighth, Delta with ninety nine hunter on the seventh. Delta again with 99 Slayer on the 6th. Feel My Pokes with 99 Archaeology on the 6th. And then Rastafa with 200 million Fire Making XP also on the 6th. <laughs> All right. Well, then we have uh, Seth Aroff with 99 Rune Crafting on September 6th. We have Stinky Pete 22 with 99 Divination on September 6th. Um, I Herblaw with 120 fletching on September 5th, and um, what is this? V night V night shade with 99 fishing on September 5th. Then we have Nafan with 99 rune crafting on September 4th, and we have Devil Chat. Devil Chat. Devil Chat. Devil Chat. Jesus. Um, 99 fire making September 3rd and stinky Pete 22 again with 99 hunter on September 3rd. Nice job, everybody. I agree. Nicely done. And those 200 mils are always interesting to see. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's like a question of what do you do after that? And that's, and that's something I'd really like to see iterated on in the future. I do. Is what the Zen game look like? (laughs) All right. 
I, I, I see you have a pick of the week that uh, iterates on what we did last week for pick of the week. <laughs> well, you know, exactly. Like you have so much – I've had so much fun flying around. I've flown to like all of my friends' houses now and – um. But, you know, sometimes, sometimes you just want to, like, do a barrel roll, right, Shane, or a loop and, and just shoot somebody, just, you know, get some dogfighting in there. And that's why we got Ace Combat 7, uh, Skies Unknown, as our pick of the week this week. It's been out um, a little over a year. I think I've been wanting to get this game, but uh, I'll wait for it to go on sale. And right now it's it's on sale uh, on Steam can't remember it was around $20 24 something like that um and it's it's fun i mean so this is a straight up like old school type dog fighting game but the graphics are incredible dude it looks like like pictures of aircraft sometimes um it's really 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 good um and one of the things that i love about the ace combat series is it's there's like this whole story, you know, like right. you're going through a story and, yeah. um, ah, it's, it's good, man. It's good. I, and I'm not even that far and I've really been enjoying it. And, and that is from someone like these games are not always the easiest for me to play. Well, yeah. Like, when you, when you're <laughs> dealing with flying, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, yeah, I have timed out my missions many, many times flying around looking for dots that I know should be there, but I haven't found. But it's still like, it's still so fun that I, I just keep trying. I keep playing because on those moments, like, like when you shoot a missile, like if you hold the button, you follow the missile. It, like you follow it as it hits the plane, man, it blows up. It's, it's cool. It's just uh, so it's, it's more of a, a it, it, it's more it's more of a game with an objective rather than than the simulator aspect. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean this is this is way more up like an like you know the arc, arcade style right. of like um you know a dog fighting game and stuff. But uh, yeah, it's just fun. Like yeah, you know I mean if you if you I don't know it, it, it's it's fun to be precise and it's fun to. You know, not crash and die, but it's also fun to shoot commies out of the sky. Don't say commies. <laughs> what decade did you step out of? It was the 1820s last week. Right. I, well, apparently now it's 1980s because we're flying planes. You know, I hear, I'm hear i hearing Danger Zone plane in my head. So. <laughs> and it's actually on sale as of recording this. I don't know if it will be on after because it says that the sale ends in about 13 hours. So folks oh. hearing this will not, but, uh, you know, in the off chance I do get this out early, it is on sale on Steam right now. But if not, um, you know, it, it's it's a from the looks of it, it's got excellent graphics. And how's the gameplay? I was going to say excellent gameplay, but I haven't played it yet. Oh, the gameplay is great because. Okay, good. Well, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's really good. It's not overly complicated, which like it's seriously like like an old school type dog fighting game you know you got your your missiles your guns your, your afterburners your flaps and i mean that's mostly it you know you got your different views but there's not all these like humongous combinations of buttons that do this and that that, that you know what i mean it's it's very simple and very easy to catch on to play right right well that's good but the graphics and- make it look like incredible you know like it doesn't feel that way because the graphics are so good all right well you can find that on steam that is ace combat 7 skies unknown uh i'll start what have we been up to because you know this week um i as i mentioned last week i got 107 i had to do another round of housekeeping um which of course involves making porters and you know which I, I do from scratch because I have a stack of diamonds and I have a stack of gold ore. So I just go gather the divine energy and do that. But what I've also been doing, um, I've been progressing forward on the Traveling Artisan event. I'm currently at level 20 on that. I should have enough to get it done by the time it disappears. Um, but yeah, I, I still really enjoyed that event, the, the Traveling Artisan. Nice. Yeah. Um, and, you know... I, 
it's something I definitely hope we see more of in that in that same blueprint, just because it it has given me the, the choice of going out and doing other things, you know, doing the fishing, doing the mining, and so on and so forth with that. So I, I really moving and shaking. Hmm. I should see moving and shaking. Yeah, exactly. It, and you know, it's just a it's just a nice way of splitting up the archaeology grind. So, uh, but yeah, a little bit of archaeology, uh, traveling artisan, and housekeeping, which involves making porters and whatnot. But that's what I've been up to. Cool. Well, I'm uh, I'm still in the mines, still digging. Um, I let's see, I made it to the Acropolis debris, but I can't seem to find it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because I'm 92. Uh, so I went right back to the Warforge and just kept digging. And uh, Don't forget to uh, complete your collections around there. Yeah, I, I, I need to go and do all my collections. But because I was playing so much on mobile, um, I, yeah, I went back to like something that I could grind easier right. than right. Um, you know, moving yeah. around. Yeah, and, and you know, some of those 90-ish spots are kind of rough in that way, but um, at that level, Warforged to uh, be aiming to complete Red Rum 1 is a perfectly perfectly good place to, to be grinding because, you know, it, it will thank you when you complete that and you get all the Tetra pieces, Tetra Compass pieces. Yeah, I am looking forward to that. Yeah. Um. And, you know, I'm actually still at the Praetorium at 107 because there's two mysteries of lore pages that you can unlock. And I haven't and I haven't got all of them yet. So it, I'm, I'm still progressing through that. But, oh, okay. yeah, the iffy part about that one is that, you know, you have to um, you have to use a porter because there's no deposit box in there. Otherwise, you got to transfer maps and whatnot. So it's a bit of a delay. So I just go with the porter on that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Nope. Uh, but yeah, I don't believe there's anything else. Uh, I think we can safely call that an episode. So hopefully everybody enjoyed that. If you want uh, full show notes, you can find that at update.rsbnb.com. You can also uh, subscribe to the show on any number of podcast listeners out there. Just visit update.rsbnb.com slash subscribe. We have the whole boatload of them. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Pocket Cast, Stitcher, anything really, even YouTube. Uh, lots of them. Just visit update.rsmambi.com slash subscribe. And with that being said, we'll see you guys next week for another episode of RSMB Update. Take care, everyone. See ya.